Hey everybody, welcome to my studio. It's Laura Sanadella here in Brookfield, Massachusetts. I'm coming to you live for um, the Blackstone Valley Art Association, which is located in Oxbridge, Massachusetts. Due to the COVID-19, we've been um, broadcasting live from my studio instead of live from the gallery in Oxbridge. I'm at Open Skies on Main Street. So today I want to introduce you to the um, Cape Cod National Seashore and um, we're going to go around the curve. And uh, I brought a print that I had done here and um, a 16 by 20 canvas and then I have some doodle area. And um, I'm going to introduce you to a lot of things and I hope that you enjoy yourself. If you're not painting along with me today, you're welcome to check out my videos because they will be recorded and um, later on you can find them on my website at www.artistlaurasanadella.com. So here we are and um, this is our um, subject today. We um, are talking about the curves because the curves are what's very attractive to people. Here I was able to like walk along this um, hotel and I saw this angle here. The angles and the curves are really important in art. It's attractive. It's um, going to attract you today to painting this. It's going to come across as um, difficult at first, but you don't have to take this as far as I would take this. You don't have to take this as far as someone else would take this. You can paint this as much as you want to paint. You want to give an impression of a painting, a picture here, of um, what you see. And it doesn't have to be as detailed. You can see lines of light that run across the top of the rocks. And you can see light that runs across the, long, the dunes here. See along that line. And you can see light that goes up into the dunes. You can see light across the water. You can see darkness. You can see shadows. You could go on this forever. And you could spend hours, um, six to eight hours, to paint a piece like this. Um, we're going to try to do that today in less than two hours, so we better get going, right? we got a lot to cover. I want to introduce myself to you. I'm Laura Senadella, as I said. I'm a New England artist. I'm located in um, Brookfield, Massachusetts. I prefer not to um, be in my studio as much as possible. I enjoy the outside. I like to paint outside in all weather. Um, if I'm not comfortable with the temperature or the fact that it's pouring out. I can always work from a restaurant window or a hotel window or even from my car or someone else's car. So I've been plein air painting for a couple of years now and I've been a studio artist for nearly 32 years I think. I went to school for art, high school that is. I went to college for um, psychology. So. I want to um, tell you that um, I'm pretty new at doing this. I'm not um, comfortable teaching in this little box that I have, but I did this for your behalf. This is um, beautiful blue um, material that I picked up on a clearance somewhere, and it just makes this area more um, monochromatic. <laughs> it makes it very calm. I have uh, bookcases, and I have bookcases over there and then I have cabinets over there and I have countertops in front of me and I have a table to my side. I have a folding table and the reason I'm telling you all this is this is my studio. I like to keep it like this all the time if I can. Um, from time to time I have to take down the cloth and um, fill my cabinets with stuff but basically the stuff that I have in my cabinets are for projects so um, I'm able to set up a nice little still life over here or you know um the other day i don't know if any of you had seen it but i had done a still life of these spices in a basket you know um, and i just i set it up on the nice solid blue background and it and it worked out really well so I, I try to make my area really, you know, um, not very distractive. When I'm painting, I need to zone into my paintings. Each time I do one of these um, how-to-like videos, I want to teach you something different. I want to share with you something that I learned. So I've made my studio 
really small in the corner. I have a very large studio behind me, and Claudia is here on the computer. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try to help you. If not, we can always um, look it up together. Do I have, have a, a question before you go on. Um, what makes one a master painter? Education, I think. I don't know. Um, I think that um, the more classes, the more workshops, the more people that I touch, the more I learn, the more um, I will achieve um, and one day um, die a master painter because that's as far as I can take it. Um, I don't believe that there's a level of an artist. Uh, I think that if you've had more years of experience and more, you know, um, brushwork, years of experience doesn't equal brushwork. I work um, every day of the week I, as an artist. When I can't paint, I photograph. When I can't photograph, I'm writing poetry. When I'm not writing poetry, I'm, I'm thinking of some story or some character or, you know, someday I'm going to be a writer. Um, I have all kinds of uh, encounters with animals and such and things that are really interesting. And I'm kind of excited that um, this chapter in my art, um, I can put a lot towards my granddaughter. I think that there's a time in your life, uh, I did a lot of advertising when I was younger in my 20s, and um, that was the thing. And I did some uh, painted jeans. I did jean jackets. I wear jeans all the time. I, I'm into jeans. Um, I like Levi's. Um, you know, faded with holes in them from 1980. You know, um, really cool. So, in, on, before you we move on, is there some kind of a certification that you can get? Or at some oh, there's point, all kinds of education in being an artist. You could go to college to be an artist. You could learn from master painters. Yeah. You could go to small schools. Like um, in each city, there's a small school where they say that they are master painters or they're, um, you know, instructors of art. You can take um, instruction at museums. I um, worked with the National um, gallery in Washington to teach classes to kids in the um, public school system. And um, I. Uh, Could you at some point determine that you yourself, you think of your, you are a master? When I'm gone. I believe that like education is really important. We come out with new products all the time. I want to know what those products are and I want to know what they do. Um, the more you learn, the better you become. The more you learn, the, the more you can do. Um, I don't believe that I'm ever going to arrive. I'm going to like land as a master painter. Um, when I'm gone, my paintings, I hope, will be considered, you know, um, well done. Or at least convey something to you. I um, talk a lot of times about, like, I'm telling you my story in my art. If you look at my art, it tells a story. I'm not sure what story it's going to tell you, but here at the National um, Park, this uh, we've gone here quite a few times. This is um, probably, uh, this was last year um, in June, and um, the lighting is different all the time. Um, a lot of people go to the National Seashore just for the lighting. I got some amazing lighting in June, but I can tell you I have beautiful lighting in October too. So um, I, I want to I want to tell you about the National Seashore, but I don't, I personally don't know enough about it. It's one of my um, to dos is I want to get my uh, big red out there in the dunes and um, go out there and paint and have a campfire and listen to music and eat fish and. You know, I have uh, all kinds of, they have tours down there too for that, but um, Big Red can handle it. I have a big um, SUV. So, um, we, we went here and um, we walked here every morning and, it, and it's just, it's a, a serene, I want to say it's serene, I wanted to call this something serenity, but um, I don't know how many serenity things I paint. One of the reasons I paint is for serenity. I um, suffer from chronic pain, 
and um, it's very relaxing. It's meditative um, painting. I can I can tell you what it smelled like when I was here because I've been training myself for years to um, not only like taking classes but there's also something you have to do with yourself like I have learned how to zone into an environment and to be able to take mental notes of like what it smelled like when it was here um, it was smelly in um, June it was um, you know like see like the sea and the sun and it had been um, not stirred up for a while and uh, it was very calm which was nice I mean I was able to get really nice pictures of the lighthouse so this is a jetty that you can walk out to to the lighthouse in um, Provincetown and um, it's beautiful there um, you could walk for um, there are backpackers that walk for like two weeks down there at the National Seashore and this is in Provincetown, but you know, it starts way back in Easton, I think. So, um, we'll get going on the painting, and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my supplies. I use artist grade oil paints. I don't represent any companies, so I can't tell you what I use, but I found these colors, and um, I try to stay in the, the, the primary colors as much as I can. I'm going to use an um, ultramarine like blue. I'm going to use a, a real red and a yellow ochre, and then I'm going to use a, a lemon-like yellow and a titanium white and an artist white. And then I'm going to use a, a resin gel and a mineral spirits and some um, walnut oil. And I'm going to use a two-inch brush um, probably a one inch brush, probably all the way down to a signature brush. So I'm going to um, show you one of my, my new brushes. Um, I have to hide the, the name on it, but um, it's a square brush. And I got it on the clearance and people ask me, you know, do you use certain brushes for certain things? When I was trained to paint um, in high school, they made me um, use over and over again a very large brush and to, to be able to use it to get very small areas. We would um, squeeze so many hairs together, like say you say three hairs, four hairs, and um, you would squeeze that at the top of the brush. Let's see if I got a good brush for that to show you, demonstrate that. Okay, so see, this is a really, like, beat-up brush. I use my old beat-up brushes to smooth out my edges. So when I was in school, they would say, take these hairs and separate them. Usually we used a razor, a razor knife. Separate them, and you can count your hairs. I don't know if you can see that, but you can count your hairs. And it's ridiculous. It's too hard for me. Um, I think that some people enjoy the process of painting. I used to enjoy the process of preparing my surfaces. I, um, I use birch boards and I lay out like, I don't know, 20 of them on a huge table and I, I go with my sander and I gesso it and sand it and gesso it and sand it and I spend a whole entire day making these beautiful pieces and then I go and I slap paint on it with a palette knife really thick. So like all that time that I spent making it smooth was um, not wasted, but it was like I was into it. And um, sometimes you just gotta do stuff like that because that's what makes you feel right or whatever. And then there are other times where I say that, you know, I'm gonna call a distributor and I'm gonna order, you know, a case of I don't know, 16 by 20s, which this is today. This is a 16 by 20. And it's got a really nice edge to it. Um, let me see if I can get a ruler. And then uh, I can show you. Oh, here's one of these tools that I wanted to tell you about. This is a composition finder. You can hold it up and you can look for what you want to paint. So on this piece here that I picked out, I had to crop it. 
because it was way bigger than that. I did almost panoramic, of course. There's a lighthouse to the left, so. Um, I have this uh, measuring thing here, and I can tell you how thick my thing is. Almost, it's nearly um, one and a half inches thick. So I have a uh, one and a half inch thick here canvas and um, it's 16 by 20 so it's width by height so it would be 20 by 16 and then um, I'm gonna um, turn around the camera so that I can walk to the other side so excuse me when I do this because I can't go out the other side but set up my, my tools and um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I do. I'm not saying that you have to do what I do or use what I use, but I'm telling you that um, some of the suggestions that were given to me have changed my life tremendously. I um, have been a painter, I told you, for a really long time. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've had a lot of problems. And I've worked my way through them, and if I can help somebody else avoid that, you know, um, I'm all for it. So I like to give away my tips and my tricks, because they're not my tips and tricks. There are tips and tricks. There were painters that came before us. And like I said, there's a lot of new products today. So I learn a lot from people that are younger than me that are using today's products, because I'm so stuck on yesterday's products. But I did find that there's a combination of my mediums and how much of my mediums that I use and um, the products that I use. I want to say that um, Claudia was telling me that this is really um, it's a um, nice canvas. And um, the reason I bought it is because I believe that the back of this has a double piece of wood. Um, it's called the edge. And um, you don't have to frame it. You just paint the edges on it. And I think that sometimes um, something this thick, like for instance, if I had put a frame on this and it was like a four inch frame, I would consider that sexy. Not that, you know, I find this real sexy, but I mean, look at the curves on this, like for real. Um, the edges on this are amazing. I'll have to get one out of the box so you can see it. I told you I don't represent any products, but um, there are some things that I recommend and there are some things that I believe you can do a painting in any kind of materials. I've um, painted on uh, shopping bags. Um, I've painted on newspaper. I've painted on those drink coasters at a bar. Um, I've painted on um, those mats and diners. So I've painted on cars. I've painted on jeans. I told you I painted on everything, but see how thick this is? It's so nice. And it's tight. It's a really nice tight canvas. So I don't represent any products, but um, this is nice. And every now and then you find things on sale, and this is more than nice. This is sexy. So um, I'm, I'm happy to paint on it today. Sometimes I get frustrated at the products that I have available to me. So I do things to fix that. Like I wanted to share with you today how I pre-color my canvases. I'll take this um, out with me to paint, and it's pretty ready to adhere to. And um, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that this is a staining that I did. I just rubbed the paint that I had left over. But um, I really like that color for some of my landscapes. For instance, this would be a nice one if I had had this prepared, but unfortunately that canvas is not tight, which means I have to go and work on it. Which I'm happy and, and glad that I had 
some education in um, high school, they taught me how to do things like stretching canvas. I can stretch my own canvases out of a shirt from a thrift shop, and um, it comes out beautiful. I love painting on silk. Um, I don't always do thick paintings, but today we're going to do this rather thick. There's a lot of texture here. There's a lot of things going on. Just knowing that this is the beach, this is the ocean, these are the rocks, and this is a marsh with grass, and those are dunes with hills and trees. There's a lot of texture, so today we might do this textured um, in order to get through it as fast as we need to on this um, 20 by 16 cotton duck canvas and um, it's been pre-primed from the factory so um, I didn't have to do any work on it but as I told you before I enjoy doing that I do like to work on wood from time to time in my jar here I have my mineral spirits to clean my um, brushes I don't clean them I just wipe them off when I um, go to clean them I use uh, uh, oil soap um, then I have my walnut oil and I have some um, mineral spirit like product um, you know it's a thinner it's a, a paint thinner for artists I use artist grade products one of the reasons why I do is because the non-artist grade stuff takes a little more work but um, I'm capable of painting with whatever. Um, it's sometimes getting to the process of it is more difficult. If you don't have a lot of pigment in your paint, that's what we're looking for here. So I'm gonna set up my palette now and I'm gonna tell you the order that I go in it is really important to me. I like to paint from the darkest darks to the lightest lights. So I put my dark paints to the left of my palette and my white paints or light I put to the right of my palette. I can actually show it to you today. I have a little palette today that I'm going to um, put on so you can see it. So I have this beautiful tablecloth underneath my paints, and um, people always ask me, so why do you do that? You know, um, I want to feel good where I'm at. I'm going to sit here for hours, and uh, I'm telling you um, this is probably going to be about four to six hours, this painting. I'm going to try to get it today as much as possible, but just setting up this painting takes hours. You know, um, coming up with the ideas, sitting on the computer, uh, wanting to figure out how I can convey to you what we're going to do today. I want to make sure that every time that we get together, I share something with you. I want to give you one of my um, tips and tricks. So, this is one of them right here. I don't know if you can see that. I line my paints up from the darkest to the lightest. And then I use my mediums. We're doing this um, gel medium. I'm going to put a pile of the gel medium on both sides of my colors, one on the light and one on the dark, because after a while, my brushes, I'll have a dark and a light set. Someone asked how many brushes do I use in a painting. Um, sometimes I'm comfortable with using three or four brushes, but there are times when I can use 15 to 25. Um, I don't mind cleaning my brushes, it is difficult, so um, I try to use as least as possible. I try to take the, the, the least difficult road traveled, but I also don't want to make it difficult. I want to make it relaxing. So I'm going to get started with you, and I'm going to show you right off that this is my palette. 
this is my canvas and this is my piece and over here I have a place where I can work and I can show you some examples of my paint for instance one of the things that I recommend that people buy is a um, gray pad of um, paper just a second gray pad of paper You can use a disposable palette. It's um, usually like a wax paper. Alright, so I have a few things here that I, um, I guess they're hand wipes. I have hand wipes. I have a ruler, marker, pencil. I have an extra jar or two. Palette knives. I use these palette knives. Not only for painting, but for mixing my paint. So this is a good size palette knife. My brushes in all different sizes. But I don't always use them. Um, I have a fan brush. I don't very often use my fan brushes, but I have several of them. I have them in different sizes. Um, I sort of develop a favorites for a while and then I need to replace them and it's difficult. But like I said, I was trained that you can paint with anything, and and that's that's the trick. That's um, sometimes your paint might not be as um, great as the level that you want to be, but your additive is great. Um, additives can make a difference in your paints. You want to be careful not to add too much additives because it can crackle, um, or you can lose the pigment of your paint. And that's important um, in your layering. I'm layering. I spend a lot of time staining and layering my paintings. And sometimes, you know, I don't get a chance to finish this video. But like I told you before, you can check back because I do have other things that you can um, work with me in uh, private groups. Or, you know, I can do other videos from time to time that might be helpful to you. But for now, we're going to get started, and I'm going to tell you quickly the colors that I'm going to use here. I want to say that there is like a brownish, tannish, bluish color um, as the main color here. There is a lot of green, and we're going to have to exaggerate on the green because it's sort of drab. Um, looking at this piece, it's a beautiful piece, but um, as far as painting it, I want it to have that same gloss or look or effect, I'm going to have to like take it to a, a step higher in value, uh, lower and um, maybe develop some more of that shadow that's underneath the rocks, um, kind of exaggerate that corner. See, we talked about curves. Curves are really sexy, um, especially in advertising. If I'm gonna, you know, want to sell this painting, I wanna, I wanna look at it as in a, um, a customer's point of view. What is going to attract the customer? For myself, when I look at this painting, one of the places that I can see a, a high focus on would be this curve right in here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that would be like my first you know, place that my eyes are brought to. And I'm gonna wanna like emphasize that corner a little bit with maybe like a lighter gray blue. And then back in here, there, right above the rocks, there's that line, that like sharp um, light that comes across the top of the jetty. And then behind that, there's another blue. 
But in this blue in here, there's a little bit of a curve that goes around. There's a curve in here. And then, you know, we, if you know anything about um, Cape Cod, we are literally right at the top of the, um, where my thumb is. This is where we would be located, is where my thumb would be. If you were to look at Cape Cod, it's shaped like a muscle. You know, um, we would be right around that curve. So this is around the curve for me. And um, we're gonna get painting on this so we can get some staining on there. And I do that with some of my oil and my paint thinner. And I'm gonna develop that color I just mentioned to you. I'll do it over here so you can see it on the paper. I have a um, question. Yeah. A, well, a comment and a question, I think. Um, Mary Foley said hi, hello. And she said she uses a plastic knife if she's concerned with it getting rust on it, um, especially if she's in a rush to clean up and there's water on it. Or is rust not a big deal and just go with the flexibility of the metal blade? Yeah, just go with it. Um, if it, Sometimes um, people have sanded them down and some people um, scrape them, but I don't think that there's enough rust in that to come to affect your paint in any way. Um, I like the plastic ones because they're like pretty disposable. Um, but I do, you know, paint so much now that I clean a bucket full of things once, once a week probably. So I'm looking at my piece here and I have a stool that I'm going to keep moving around. In front of my um, easel, I keep a roll of paper towels in case I have an accident. But I do like myself, I like I prefer to use a towel. I have a towel here. So I'm coming over um, with my uh, colors now to show you. I'm going to pick up some of the darker gel medium. Mary every said time, thank you. Every time I pick up, you're welcome, Mary. Every time I pick up some of the paint, I'm literally just picking up the tip of my paintbrush. I'm picking up paint and medium, and in the lighter colors, I can pick up some of the painter's white, which I forgot to put on my palette. So, um, I'll do that when I get a chance. But for now, I'm going to show you my colors on this paper here. This blue is very, like... I don't know if you call it like a royal blue maybe. It's a royal it's a royal color anyway. Um, and then I'm gonna take some of my red. We're gonna use different brushes for each. This is a good thing for my old stiff brushes, you know, so I can show you examples of my colors here. My red is like a real red. Um, almost like an apple red. My yellow is um, yellow ochre. Okay. So then I take those colors together and I make a color. And I tell you, every time I pick up the paint, I pick up a little bit more of the medium. And I'm going to mix them together with... I say yellow, ochre, red, blue, and then a little more blue, and I get sort of a black. But it's more on the purple here. If I go real thin, you can see that it turns purple. So I'm going to add more of my thinner and a little more of the lean. I'm going to lean my paint, they say. I'm going to lean my paint more towards the blue. Now I can do that over and over again. I can lean it towards a brown. I can, whatever, um, lean it towards a black. If you add a little more yellow ochre to that, you can lean it towards a green. See, and that could be one of the greens that's in the back of my painting here. I could add more blue to it. And I could get another one that maybe, oh yeah, that's like a tree color in the back. So I can lean my 
basic colors. These are the ones that I'm using. I can lean it towards the color that I want. If I decide I want to go a little lighter, maybe I can add a little of the white to it. And I can get maybe the highlights in the marsh. You know, like it's sort of a pea green or maybe more on the sage. And then I can say, well, I want it to be a little bit cooler, like it's way far in the distance. And I can now, I'll come down here, I can add a little more blue to it and I can lean my green towards another color. So I can make a lot of colors out of these three colors before I even add whites. So um, I don't need a lot of paint when I go out to paint. Right now I'm in the studio, so um, I have an opportunity to use many colors if I chose to. So I'm gonna put my palette down and um, put my brushes away. We can start staining the canvas. I told you I use hand wipes constantly. Um, I do recommend gloves, but I have trouble working with gloves. Um, I'm not sure I wear gloves when I um, can, but right now, you know, with the situation, it's um, not that I'm wasting them, but I'll wash my hands more often, and I like the wipes um, and wet towels. I keep wet towels along here as well. I use clips. Um, I don't know if you notice that. I want to try to keep things from moving. If I'm outside, I have a lot of variables. Uh, the, the wind can take something like this, you know, pretty hard. So I try to stay um, and plant myself in a place that I wouldn't expect it to be too windy. So we're gonna get going and um, start staining, like I said earlier. I'm going to switch to a larger brush for my staining process. I like these short handled two inch brushes. Um, it feels good to like get this on here. The majority of this painting to me is sort of a slate blue. If you're ever down on the Cape, it's sort of like a gray blue most of the, the year. Um, the lighting comes with the sunsets and the sunrises. And um, they're absolutely gorgeous um, if you ever get an opportunity. If not, you can always look it up on the internet. But um, we're going to put this color on here. And I told you before that I use this blue, this red, and this yellow. And that's what I'm going to do with my big brush. I'm going to stick it in the medium. I'm going to use a thinner first. maybe a little bit of that oil make it really thin I want it to dry but I don't I have to be careful of that balance you know um, with the thinners in the paint because you don't want it to crackle so I take some of the blue some of the red and yellow ochre and then more blue and that's how I get that color that I want. And sometimes, you know, if I put it on here and I see that I've gone too red, I can adjust that. That's what I told you before about coming up and down. I can adjust that with my um, amount of color, my pigment. This is, it needs to be more blue. So I'm gonna get that purpley blue color that I want. And if you look, I, I start with the darkest darks and go to the lightest lights. So if you look way deep below this water here, the edges on here and here is sort of black. Then there's a whole section of like a black color there, but I don't use black. So I mix these colors. I use the blue, the red, and the yellow ochre. Very little of the red. The red seems to be a strong thing. and. My red is always a problem. It seems to like connect to everything. Um, I get it all over the place. Um, it, it never dries. It's sort of a frustrating color, but we love it. So um, we'll work with reds. So this to me is sort of closer to, in the sand here. 
then um, maybe up in the rocks there might be some more of this red color here. But there's definitely red in the dunes. Um, but I'm going to need more blue. I can see, you know, the um, sky and the ocean. This is sort of like a, a runoff of the ocean. There's a jetty in between. And then, like I said, a lighthouse at the end. So in here, it's almost black. I don't know if you saw, but I threw some yellow ochre and some blue in here, and I'm now almost black, but not black. It's more of a purple color. And I can bring this down and keep blending it, and I'm going to start to develop um, areas that are darker or lighter than the other, and that will help me later on put the texture in the water, the waves. It, it was very calm. There wasn't a whole lot of waves there that day. And I um, told you it was in June. It wasn't really um, cold. It was fairly warm. And, but there was a smell. I mean, like, maybe the water needed to be stirred up a bit. You know, um, there was horseshoe crabs mating. There was birds. It was... Um, very calm, quiet. You can still hear the ocean. You can always hear the ocean at the National Seashore. But it's more faint. Now doing this, I seem to splat my paint. So having the edges here is good, or having this board below and above is another trick. I um, screw my canvas to the back of this with a um, little screw. I put one in each corner. Again, I'm staining my canvas, and I'm hoping that it'll be dry enough to add some more color later. Right above the um, dunes, there's going to be like a purple hue underneath where the sky begins. It's a real light color blue, but maybe more of the purple hue. I want to make sure this is really thin so it'll dry. So I'm going to take my color and move it around. Again, this brush is great for this because you don't have a lot of rest a um, action. I like to paint my edges in the beginning of the painting so that I don't forget. There's nothing worse than a line around it because you've got to paint the edges in the beginning. Make sure it's um, somewhat covered. It also protects the canvas from being um, damaged. It helps in keeping it tight. Sometimes it's, um, I don't know, boring, pain in the neck, but it is important. It's time consuming. You know, you really want to like jump into all that detail or whatever, but we're going to do that anyway. Because I'm going to start with the darkest darks and go to the lightest lights. And you keep using all that blue. I use very little paints. I put out just as much as I think I'm going to need at a time. Um, they, they don't dry for a couple of days, so you could use the same um, paints for a while. In here, it's going to be more blue. Up in the top here, it's a real dark blue. See, it's dragging. I need more the drying in the end. I want it to go on nice and thin at the top. Well, my paint's not um, moving, not flowing properly, so I'm going to get some more of that drying in the end. And maybe some red. So we're going to hope that this stain is going to be um, pretty dry in about, not dry, it takes forever to dry, but dry enough to adhere more paint to by the time we get around to it again. It takes about a year for a painting to dry enough for you to varnish it. That's a whole year to varnish it. But I paint with a varnish medium 
um, mixture. So I might not have to varnish it, but if you have to varnish a painting, I would recommend you wait a year. There is this temporary varnish that you can buy, but then you gotta remove it from the canvas. There's so many things to learn. All that stuff's not really that important. You can just paint an oil painting. You don't necessarily need to have all these things. Some of these things are fancy things. It makes things easier, or it makes it look better, or whatever, but you can paint with anything. Competing is another story. You want to make sure that you're using a top grade product when you're competing. Or something close to that. Something that's easy for you to work with. <coughs> I guess that's what the thing is. So if this is not dry enough to the to the touch, I can come back at it with some other things. But now I know that my underpainting is going to be done here, and I tried to go as thin as I could using my three drying mediums as thin as I could. Now that's there's no real recipe to that. You're gonna have to learn what works for you. And a lot of that is practice and unfortunately sometimes mistakes. But a lot of paintings can be painted over. Right in here, I can see that the um, beach starts to recede. I think this is starting to be low tide. And it's almost like a dark purple color and I have a suspicion that if I mix this red with a little bit of blue, I can get that color that's there. So I'm going to just keep adding a little more blue in here. I can eyeball this and see it. You don't necessarily have to be able to do that. You can draw this out. It's not a hard drawing. It's very basic. This is more or less a triangular shape here. See that? You can go for shapes. But so yeah, I'm going to keep working my paint around. I can move the paint around as I go because it will make it thinner. If I keep touching the paint. I can take some of the paint off my um, brush with my rag. And I can make it thinner where I know it's going to be a lot lighter using some of my medium. The paint thinner. One of the problems with me using jars is my two inch brush doesn't really fit in the jar very well. I should figure that out before I get started. But you know, I, I work it out as I go in a lot of ways. So in here, I know it's a lot lighter, so I can pull away some of this paint using some of the mineral <laughs> spirits, but look at that color. Purple's one of my favorite colors. I see almost an S from in here. So I'm going to take some of this paint off, knowing that this is going to be one of my lighter colors. And I can take some of this paint from here and I can move it up in here. And take some of this off. The, the sky goes horizontally. The horizon is the easiest way to remember that. So when I put my strokes on my brush, I always try to go horizontally with it. And I don't really want you to see my brush strokes unless I'm doing some brush stroke type painting, but I'm right now I'm just staining, so I don't really want a lot of brush strokes. I want it to be as smooth as I can, and at the same time, I, you know, I'm getting a lighter texture maybe, or a area that maybe the light's coming through. But um, I can keep doing this. And, and not necessarily have to add white to the painting, but I do have that opportunity here. I just bought some really nice white, some yummy white. Like Claudia, when I said the way I describe things, yummy and sexy and 
Um, that's one way to see it. See, I can make this blue um, anything I want because I'm subtracting a lot of it here. And I'm going to add some whites to it. But I want to make sure that the outside of it has this dark edge to it, darker edge to it. So this is my darkest darks, and I'm leaning into my lightest light. And at the same time, I'm moving the paint around to thin it so it'll dry faster without crackling. It's a process of layering. I don't know if this was done because they didn't have a lot of paint, but I'm using a very minimal palette to do this painting. Minimal meaning um, one, two, three, four, five, six paints and two mediums and a paint thinner. This was a challenge I did a few years back. I was painting and I wanted to see how many colors could I make with the least amount of colors. Now I just picked up something on the, I'm going to find an old brush, dry brush, and I can pick up this hair that's there, feather it in. So this is like feathering it. I don't know if you can hear the scraping on the brush. I have a um, comment too. Yeah. It says, um, Lisa said she loves the colors you're painting. It's um, fascinating how you start with the darker color and then put the lighter ones over them. It must take a lot of practice to know what darker colors to use. You start to see them. You can train your eye to see the colors. Like um, in here, I see the purple. I know that the purple works really well with the green and just above the tree line I need to come at it with some sort of a dark color and I don't want to use black so I would use like my darkest purple to make that green highlighted. You know some of it you will just know I mean and then you can just play with it too. I mean this I said this is very meditative I don't want to take this too seriously, but it is very pretty here, and um, one of the reasons I come here is for the lighting, but unfortunately this photograph doesn't show you justice, what it looks like, so I'm just going to give it a little more of a light pop on the sky. And then my um, underpainting has to have layers of colors in order to show like the ripples in the water. There's not a whole lot of ripples in the water, but if you're looking at it from a distance, you can see that there's underpainting, um, under colors. Again, I think after a while, you begin to train your eye to see the under. I don't have enough paint. I told you, sometimes being real cheap with the paint isn't a great idea either because it can be difficult to get to where I want to go with the painting. Sometimes it's nice to pick up a couple of extra greens so that like I'm using a couple of greens, especially painting in the forest. It's nice. But I don't have to because I can make my own greens like I showed you over here. So we're going to let this kind of dry a little bit. I'll fill my palette up, grab a drink of water, and you guys can um, do the same. I didn't get one side of this, so I can come back and get that before I get started again.
Starting with the darks is going to help get that depth. There's some depth here behind the rocks or in the water. And there's shadows and there's bright spots and light spots. And that little tool that I showed you earlier. I don't know if you can hear me talking to the back of you. Okay, so the darks are going to show the lights. So where there is one color, there's like three colors. There's the base color, and then there's the dark, and there's the light color. The lights are usually the highlights, and the darks are the underpainting. So then there's the mid color, which is your color. Here it's very light blue, um, very dark here for that. But if you see under here, it's dark. So I can I can come back at here. I told you I can build on my colors. I can come back over in here. Let's find a small brush and take some of my yellow ochre. And I know that I can get this black line here for my, uh, it'd be really great if this was the same size, huh? But um, I could just go right off the line. So in here, I know that my um, rocks need to come on. I need to have two lines for my rocks. I need the top of the rocks and I need the bottom of the rocks. And then I need some blue. Remember I talked about the black. You, you use some of the blue, the red, and the yellow ochre, and then you add more blue and you get that black color, which is underneath those rocks there. So the bottom line here would be my black. And see, so yeah, all I'm showing right now is the yellow ochre. I have to decide how thick I want it to be. Um, Rick made a comment. You're the new successor to Bob Ross. Mm. Fun to watch. You need to go to YouTube. So, I have yellow ochre over my like purple like color right now. I'm gonna lean on my bookcase to show you this. But I I'm now gonna pick up some blue, and all of a sudden you're gonna see that this is gonna turn like a black, like a cranberry maybe, towards the black. But if I keep taking this color up higher, I can use it up in my rocks because it's got this color over here too. So remember the thinner my paint, the faster it dries. And I'm using my drying medium right now. So. I'm gonna take this away and I'm gonna move it down to my beach. Remember I told you there's a really cool curve in here. I don't wanna lose that. So I'm gonna put that down in here. And then I'm gonna get my little S that I like. With the extra paint that I have around, like there's no waste. You can pick up this paint to make it really thin and you can move it around. I do that a lot. You know, this whole area can just be mixed in. There's rocks in here. There's going to be a whole lot of texture. But I don't know if you can see it now. It's starting to get that shadow down in here. But I'm, I'm not blue enough um, up in here because it's not black enough. So I'm going to come back and get some more of my blue. And watch this yellow ochre. It'll eventually turn into a black. If I keep spreading in the red and the blue and take some of it down in here because I know that my beach needs it. Again, I, I'm using too small of a brush. I'm going to flip up the brush to a larger size right now. Let's go with this one. So I need to get this yellow ochre, it's, it's um, 
some coming down here from the rocks. There's some shadow coming down from the rocks. So I can take that yellow ochre and I can just bring it down with this fluffy little brush. It reminds me of a makeup brush. Um, I can bring that down. It's uh, maybe not so, that's, that's like so close together here. Um, maybe I'll take a smaller brush and uh, put down another one in here, make it more random. I don't want it to be too close to uniform because it won't look realistic. I mean, sometimes when things are realistic, they don't look right. It's where an artist comes in and they say, oh, let's shift this to the right and raise it up. And we can do that as artists. We have a license to do that as an artist. Especially if you've been painting for a while, you can pretty much plan your site. So see, I brought down some of that paint so it didn't go to waste now. And um, that'll work as my shadows. And down in here, I can still put my line in. I still have some paint on my brush. I'm holding two brushes together. They're piggybacking. I use my finger in between the two as a spacer, but I can carry two brushes at the same time. It helps. So if, like, say in here, I know there's this, like, little tiny line in here in the sand, and I want to make sure that I pull it over. We're just about an hour in. Does anybody have any questions? From the like staining <coughs> process, maybe? Yep. <coughs> we have a comment that says that it's magical. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm moving around my uh, leftover paint in here. I'm going to try to get that black line right here. We want it to be nice and black. So I'll, I'm going to pick up some more blue. i got to give myself some more blue. With my little brush, I can pull it across and mix it in here a little bit. And you'll see it, it's getting darker as I go. I'm building on my colors, adding my pigment to the painting. At the same time, I'm somehow getting a drawing here. said that um, she can see the shadows along the shoreline. So it, what you're doing is working. Cool. So my, all of a sudden my three colors that I used here, my blue, my red, and my yellow ochre are starting to look like a black in here. That's what I want it to do. Because this underneath the reef is really dark. It's um, going to have to be more of a purplish purplish color. So what I'm going to do is use these three colors but lean more towards the blue. And then I'm going to get that darker color. So I can take this p extra paint on my brush and spread it around wherever. I switch to a larger brush. Yeah, now jump into these mediums and um, go too thin because you don't want your painting to crackle. You can always subtract things if you have too much or you're not going the direction that you want to go with your painting. Oils are one of those things that you can like paint over so many times it will just look textured. So now um, I see a lot of green in here, and I know that if I just add some of my yellow and my yellow ochre, my lemon yellow and yellow ochre, to this color that's here, I'm going to pick up some of that green. Before it dries is my opportunity to jump in here with some yellow and pick up some of that green. And more blue, always leaning towards more blue. I mix all this work right here on the thing. And at the same time, I'm getting the area that's going to be drawn here with the marsh to 
just taking the paint that's here and mixing it up. So I can use some of that here in my lighter areas down below. Just take some of this paint and I can put it down here. So oh, I can stand back from it at this point and look at it, but I already know in my mind that it's nowhere near where I want it to be. This is too yellow for me, but it's a great under yellow. I don't know if you can see that, but in here there's a nice little under yellow. If I take a smaller brush, instead of using this large brush here, I'll move this around. Take some more of this. And bring it down here maybe. A little bit underneath my jetty. My reef. I don't know what you would call it. Um, there's a curve in here. I can use some of that lighter paint on my brush. So now I'm going for the lighter one just to get an outline again here. I don't want to lose this outline that I have. I'm going to make it white. I like this little line in the water. Or right before the water on the beach. There's a very dark area there. I can leave this color here in. And I'll put in the sand maybe a little here. So I can keep mixing on my colors. Sometimes I'll go lighter than light and then darker than dark, but just so I don't lose things, I might have to go back and forth a few times. I know in here there's a lot of light. And then there's some sort of a shape here. I'm kind of on a pink here. I don't see pink. But I don't want to lose that area, so I'm going to go light. But now that I see it on here, it kind of does look a little pink. Underneath this color. So we're going to hope that this dries and we'll probably have to wipe most of it off because white is another one of those colors that doesn't dry very fast. White and red. My bigger brush, I can come in here and clean it off and soften it just like a makeup brush. And hope that making it thinner will help it dry faster. Alright, so there. There's a real light, light line along the water's edge as well. I don't want to lose that, so we'll put a little bit of weight on there. That's my water's edge. And then I know there's a line that comes across here. It's a little lighter. Again, sort of, it's sort of like a reflection in the water, so I bring it down every now and then, not too uniform. And make it thin. I'm holding my brush very lightly on the canvas. I'm pulling it thin. Because I hope that my staining process will dry fast enough so that I can add color that will adhere to this. Now up in here, I need to get more green. We made like some other greens in here earlier. But I'm going to need more blue. There's a, um, a line between the dunes, it's a road, sand line. So where there's light, there's dark, so I'm going to put a dark green in here. 
to the end. And I can use some of that blue and mix it in here. I see there's a lot of um, different areas of green. So we can do some of it in this blue. And then we can come back with another color green. And here there's some sort of a body of water. So I have my blue. I can put that in there for the water. And then in here before the rocks, there's another body of water. And then the grass is in between. So the darker, darker blues now, we're going to go into the blues, which really is the greens, but green is a combination of blue and yellow. Now there's two yellows that I'm using, a light yellow and a yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is warmer, and the other yellow is more of a lemon yellow, which is a little cooler. And I'm going to... Um, say that the grass that is closest to me will be the warmest, so there should be more yellow ochre. And the grass that's the furthest in the marsh away from me would be the lightest. That would be almost even a tannish green way up in the back. But I'll use the lemon yellow for the further distance um, when I'm making my bluish greenish color. And here I'm going to put the other little, I say it's like a pond, a little pond. Adding more paint now as I come on my second layer here, the stain. I don't know if you can see that's definitely more paint. I made it a little lighter so you can see it. Now doing it on the um, filming is a little bit different than I would do it in real life. I have to go a little bit lighter so that you can see it. But if you can't see what I'm doing, it doesn't mean that you can't, um, you know, find your own way, your own path, we'll say. This to me is like a, a, a journey, a journey through the memory of the location that I'm painting. If I paint from a photograph, for instance, if you had commissioned me to paint your vacation home, and I've never been there, I know something where I can research where you were or, you know, ask you questions. And um, a lot of times it's the feelings. Um, paintings take on a, an emotion, too, not just a skill or a... image are you showing? You're telling a story. Um, in the story, you're telling the emotion to the story. Okay, so further away, it's going to be lighter, and it's going to be darker and warmer in the front, cooler in the back. I can add a little bit of blue with a little bit of the lemon yellow to get a different color of blue back here. But I want to use some of that blue up in here. Sometimes I, I'll mix my paint right on the canvas because I'm outside painting. But being in my studio here, I have the opportunity to have my palette on a stool next to me. I want to. I want to. I want to remember before you know it gets too late that there's a lot of blue in here. I'll take some of the light color. It's important to have the direction of the water. And you can do that in your layering. You can create the direction. You might be able to create some of the wave action or the ripples. There's not a lot of waves. There's more like ripples here. It's very calm. So 
great spot. But I can take this stuff I told you and I can move it around and it thins the paint and helps it dry in other areas. I want to make sure that I have some of the blue in the sky. So I'll take a lot of it. I picked up some of the blue. You can't clearly see this, but I can tell you that on the bottom of the sky here, it's a very pale blue. It's almost like a... Um, a gray. So if I were to go with a gray, I would add a little more yellow to my blue and white, and I can get more of a gray white, a blue white. If you um, could see uh, the image better, I um, keep wondering if I should do my own printing, because sometimes I see things that the printer can't see. Or I remember what it looks like. You know, see my adding just a little bit of yellow to my blue and my white, I get sort of a gray blue. See that over in the corner? I want to go really light over here because I'm going to direct my eye across the sky. I can feather in the rest of the colors. See, there's some of that yellow ochre. and it makes a nice blue and white color for the sky. It's a gray blue. If you were to look at it on a color chart, it would be leaning, leaning towards a gray by just adding a dab of the yellow, yellow ochre. And then I told you the bottom of the horizon here it should be lighter. It should be darker on the edges, and it should be really light in here. So, my painting is not going to be a perfect replica of this. I'm going to give you an impression of it, because I'm only using a limited palette. The colors that I get will be close to, but not exact. There's some sort of a, a doom in the horizon. And I need to draw in here using a smaller brush. I'm just going to mix the paint that's here. I told you I could take some of this paint that's up here and I can put it down in here. So I could add it to the water, say. Give it some ripple effect. Okay, so I, I can somewhat see that, but it's not dark enough. So I, I took some of that while I was down there. I stole some of the red, and I can add that to my little dunes in the background here. Mixing it with the colors that are here. So you can faintly see the dunes in the background now. And up in here is where the dunes really begin. So I'm going to grab some... Now I'm grabbing color to adhere to this. Piece. I have my outline and I have my staining. Now I need to adhere the color. So I'm going to pick up some of the blue and some of the lighter yellow and some of the white. Always picking up some of the medium that I'm using, the drying medium. I use drying medium because I don't want to wait forever. The drying medium makes it so that the next day I can add more to this. But today we're going to do it all at once. But you can do that if you think of your paintings. You know, um, there's a little bit of a dune in here. And I don't have to be perfect because this is just going to be my interpretation of this. It's not going to be a perfect. But it's going to give you a idea of what it's like here at the National Seashore. I'm using a little bit of the reddish brownish color right now because I can see it you know, over this blue color. All my colors are all going to have a little bit of each other in it. So when I'm adding my little trees, I'm just turning my brush and making little textures. And I have a lot of leftover paint on my brush from 
where I've been before on this. This little hill here is a little bit bigger. Try and steal some of the paint on my brush. Again, I can use some of this color down in here on the it looks like it's little rocks that are going through here. All right, so the furthest from me would be the lightest, and then it gets warmer and darker when it comes closer. But I see little trees in the back. I think I'd say those are like a bluish, reddish green. So I'll take the green that I'm using, which is blue, a little red, some yellow ochre, and some more blue. And again, I always pick up some medium. I get that nice, rich, dark, almost black. I want to get that line of little trees that are in here, in that green. There's a definition down in between the two lines. This is a nice big hill here. This is quite a dune. So the darkest color is first in the background. Now I'm leaning towards the lightest. So I can just mix all this in here or I can subtract it, whatever I need to do. So now um, I need to go lighter. So I'm going to go down more yellow ochre. And this time some of that lemon yellow and white because this is the furthest green from me. I'm just going to keep adding colors until I get what I need. Again, I'm going to throw a lot of this in here because I already know it's in here. This is some of the yellows. And I know that if I take some blues, I can get what I need out of that. What I mean is get what I need out of that is that it will look like it has some textures, different depths of trees. I go light, dark, light, dark, light, dark on my trees. So you can see the different layers. See, there's layers in here. Again, I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to dance it along the line here to get that next layer of trees. What I mean, I go up and down, up and down, up and down, I'm getting whatever texture. Trees go vertically. Remember I told you the sky goes horizontal, the trees go vertical. So, so that's going to take a while to dry, so we'll just walk away from that for now. I'm going to need to get that line in here where the marsh begins. I notice in here I have too much water. See how blending this, I have an opportunity to take some of that water along and move it. Because all my colors are pretty much the same. They all have the same compound. Just some leaning towards more of another color. So I can keep going as it's drying. I um, don't need to stop. I want to make some more lines in my marsh. I'm just going to take some of that blue. For the darker areas, we started here are light. Embrace it. Sometimes you have to go dark, light, dark, light. All right, so now I'm going back to dark over the light.
there's a, a um, area of grass or marsh that comes down into the water here. So you can do that with a darker color. Bring it down and across. Remember it's staying with the same direction of everything. The marsh goes vertically. The grass grows like vertically, but the the wand view goes along the horizon. Now I need to switch back to my bigger brush and get some more of that water on there. I don't want too much time to go by that I don't get a chance to get some of this. Sometimes this is like note taking and I have to go back to the studio to finish it. I just lightly dabbed my brush that I had been using with all the other colors. So my brush is now a combination of all those colors. And I'm going to run it across the water very lightly, just barely hitting it. I'm going to get that wave or ripple effect. It kind of, you want to follow the direction of it. It sort of goes like this. There's that straight line there of white. Remember my lighter side of the paint has their own medium. I don't want to mix my darker colors. So I'm going to come down a little bit here. Kind of highlight what was there before because I don't want to lose it. So if I paint really lightly with this light color, it won't be totally dry, but it'll be dry enough that I can add color to it. I'm barely touching the canvas because I don't want to subtract my paint. It's very easy to subtract your paint. But I have some of this light color on my brush and I don't want to lose it, so I can come in and get that dune up in here. Might have to come back and put a little more green in it, but we'll see. Just have a line in here. I'm using all the paint that's still here and I'm just barely touching it because I don't want to subtract it, I just want to add to it. When I go up in my color scale by adding a little more pigment my brush and changing the color of things, getting another green in here. Just by dabbing a little bit of paint, a little more pigment. There's a nice little curve in here. I don't know how much you guys can see it, but you want to make sure you have that curve because that's what's going to direct your eye to this corner. Nice little curve. So I'll take a little bit of the white. Remember we said to like highlight the areas I got to come back to. I might just do a little white here for this curve. It's a nice little curve and then it comes around. It goes all the way across here. So but I don't necessarily need it, so I can soften it with the tip of my brush. So I know it's there now. See? Just adding a little bit of color to the colors that are there will help, see? 
This in here is a lighter green. Again, it kind of comes down and across the water. So, comes down and across the water. But it's more yellow, so I'm going to lean towards more lemon yellow in the back here. And just sort of blend it in with the colors that are here. Take that same paint and I can move it over here. So that down in here, maybe we need a little bit of it down in the sand. Again, every time I add some color to this, I can go different directions. I'll create some sort of a texture on the sand. I'm still using my big brush, but I'm turning my brush to get different points and directions. All right, I need to step back from my painting. Make sure you step back from the art at least five feet. I recommend further if you can because you want to see what it's going to look like on the wall when you, you step back. Now, my sky is really dark. I want to come back in and work on my sky. But I like how I got the light. The light is the, the best part about this. If I could show you in the image, the light has sort of a glow to it over the dune. So I'm going to clean my big brush. Maybe I'll find another brush for my blue. There's a good brush, one inch. So um, I'm going to take some more blue now and some of the white on the cleaner side of my paint. And I'm going to lighten this area here a little bit. Remember I said you need a little bit of the um, yellow. Not too much yellow though. More blue. You see there's that yellow. A little bit of white. I'm not going to go down to my tree line because I'm going to use the color that's there, but I'm going to go pretty close. That way the color that's there will um, give it some depth. That's what I told you about the underpainting. It's going to make you think that those trees are further away by allowing it to have that little line. Again, I'm carrying two brushes at the same time, so if I had to come back in here and show you a little definition in my dunes here, or trees, I could pick it up with this other brush. But for now, I'll go back to the sky. So I'm going to add this uh, light blue area here. But it, it's going to somewhat be in the gray family because it has a little bit of a yellow in it. That light, yep, light yellow. But I want to make it look like a Cape Cod sky. The light of uh, the National Seashore. People from all over the world come just to see the light. I'm sure every shore has a spot, but this right here is something. The best attraction here, I think, is the rocks. And, uh, being able to walk to the other side of the National Seashore. It would be like you were walking around the, the edge of the Cape. So I switched mics. I don't know if it makes a difference. Um, I hope that you guys are hearing me. I hope that you can see what I'm doing. If you can't, you know, stay in touch. I'll do this again or something similar. It would be helpful. So we want the edges to be darker, but the 
darker doesn't necessarily mean black because it's such a beautiful day in June. So the sky is bluer than blue. Now because my underpainting is purple, it actually helps my thin layer of blue to really pop. Underpainting is a way to get that pop or depth or pow because you go in layers. So if I stand back now, you can start to see that my sky is coming out on the right, but I have areas that I need to adjust. Standing back, you can see it clearer. I don't want it to have too much action because this is not the attention in this painting. Where would we put the attention on this little curve here? I think we can use some of this blue in here. Look at that curve. We need a lot of blue in this area. Very blue. And there's some lines in here of other colors. This brush is great for that too. Like it's a, a wide, hard bristle brush. It gives you the little ripples. So that while this is drying, I can come back at it and give it some more color. You know, kind of pen. But it's really hard to get the red to dry, I told you. So you don't want to use a lot of the red. I might have to subtract some of the red. And we'll see how far we go. Mary Foley said she can hear you better with the mic. Yeah, so this is a fairly cool mic. I um, just started it. It doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't get in my way. I'm going dark here. So you can see my water. And all I'm doing is adding blue to my red that was here before. Making sure that I stop on that. Like There's a harsh line here where it's almost black, but not, because there's reflections that are coming from the other side. I think there might be a little bit of blue in there. Remember not to make it too uniform, but... Now I have to decide where to go next, and I, I can I can almost see where it's drier and where it's not, but I know that um, if I take some of this light color and start working on my dunes, I can. I'm going to go thick now. This will be like my, what, third, fourth time? Um, we call it passes. This will be like my third pass over here on a dune, and I'm going with more paint. I'm going thicker with more medium. I'm going to get that next layer of color. I know that it's lighter in here. This is where my light areas are going to be. There's actually a lighter area in here too. So instead of wasting the paint, I can put it there. Um, this is part of the marsh. The grasses. So I can take this paint and I can move it over in here too. get that strong line in here, that blackish line. I 
I have so much blue in there, gosh, I don't want to lose it. I guess take it down here. There's a lot of blue down here. Again, I'm going at it in different directions because I'm hoping to give it that ripple effect. There. Now that's uh, that path has like a pink peach color to it. So I need some red, some white, and some of that medium. To get that layer here. Now I know that all the light is on in this area here, so I want to make sure I get that light grass. I told you one of the greatest things about the um, lighting is like what it does to colors. I don't know if you see it now, but there's pinks and there's peaches and there's lemon yellows and there's all kinds of greens going on and it's exciting. I love looking for greens to see how many greens can I make. I haven't painted this before, but um, I've been here quite a few times, I told you. This is our rock wall here. You might want to remember that it's light colored. Let's subtract some of the paint that's here. I'm worried about the time, so I'm gonna kind of move this along. Underneath the rocks is really dark. It's a um, almost black color. Right now I have like a almost green color here on my rocks. But that's okay because there's that color too. But I'm going to go lighter so I'm going to take some of the white and the yellow ochre and give it some rocks just so we have an idea. I just randomly put some of the forms of color. Um, the top is the lightest, we know that anyway. So, I don't want to put a um, whole lot of detail into it. I'm just giving you an uh, impression of what I saw when I was there. Not a perfect. But I don't want to lose like what forms are where and some random rocks in here. Now my rocks go over so in order to do that I have to give it some sort of direction. I might want to have some of the rocks roll this direction or come straight down. That will give you that direction that you need. Um, might want to have a few that go to the right, some that go to the left. But more or less, you want to show that it's a story that you're telling. So you want to make sure you tell the story that the rocks are thick and rounded and you can walk across them. I don't know how you can you know, see that in here, but we're going to work on the shapes of the rocks. For every color that I put on there. I'm going to have at least three colors. Here I think that some rocks have like a tan, a gray, an orange, a peach, a pale, a brown, a gray green. There are a lot of colors. So I'm just going to randomly put some of them on here in rock formation of what a rock would look like. It's not going to be exact. I'm going to give you my impression. So. I want to do this rather quickly, but I want to make sure you have some sort of a direction that the rocks are going over and then maybe down. And then this lighter on the top, darker on the bottom. So I might want to use some of my gray-blue-like color. 
make sure I have two of them. I just picked up some of the gray blue. And then there's a lot of black. So I've um, got some blue, some red, and some yellow ochre, and some medium, and then some more blue. It should be that real dark color that's in this black, the dark purple in this black color. Alright, let's try that. Yeah, it's a dark brown. Could lean it more towards the blue, but we'll go with the dark brown for now. Get some of that in there. We'll go a little faster and kind of get the gist. I'm turning my brush as I go. I'm putting some flat and some round and pulling it across the canvas. The bottom, I already know it's really dark, so I can use some of this black color here in my reflection. Anybody have any questions or comments that you want to... <coughs> Anything you want to talk about? Um, a lot of our art shows have been canceled, but um, we have a few of them are coming up online on May 28th. There's an art show. You can find out that information at bvaa.org. We are having virtual events. But we're a very active group. There's something for everybody. Um, check us out if you get a chance. So I might not get to finishing this um, on your time, but I will post it online if you're interested. Um, you can contact me on my email or through the BVAA. I just took some of my blue from above and I mixed it in the bottom. I stole it from there and put it over there. Um, you can do that. It's pretty easy. Now we um, need some more of that blue so we don't lose what's going on down in here. I might want to um, switch brushes again at some point, but this little one is really good for getting in between these little reflections here. I'm using some blue and white, yellow ochre, and I zigzag some little uh, textures in here. I call them textures, little spots of water in between my reflections. And see, my colors now that I'm adding are kind of mixing with the ones that are there because I'm lightly hitting them. That'll give it that ripple effect. I told you the colors are little colors, the layers. Okay, so we need some more ripples in here. I want to kind of go with the same direction that I see the water going or that I remember. If, um, journaling is really important. Um, if I had the time, I would uh, show you. But for here, you might want to talk about the reflection and how it hits the water. You might want to journal about the lighter areas and the darker areas of the water and how it recedes into a S-like shape here or how there's a straight line here, a real strong line between the reflections and the water that runs along the beach. This is sort of a, a good size shape that you might want to put in your journal, you know, the S-like shape of the water, the edge of the water. You might want to talk about the rocks. Um, when I say talk about, don't necessarily mean talk about. I remember I carried colored pencils so I could get the colors that I wanted. I would journal with my colored pencils until I could go home and use the paint. I 
prefer to paint from life, but you can paint from the studio. The more notes that you take are the more Im images. Images is a good form of note taking. The more images you have of the area, the different areas of color, shapes. So see, I'm randomly putting this color on. I know that I can come back and put another layer. But I want to give you the idea of the story that I'm trying to say. This is my water. And it runs along here. And it actually has some like purple, bluish colors. But the little ripples that come across are a little lighter. So I might do a little straight lines. And then some direction lines. These are directions. This is the, du the major direction that the water goes. But it does have little ripples that come this way on an angle. Um, Lisa said it's amazing how you bring out the uh, three-dimensional look of it with the shadows. I'm hoping to do. Yeah, so every painting isn't a success, but I like, you know, to hope that each painting I can use for some purpose. I can come back and touch this up later on if I don't like it, or I can add to it and make it a totally different scene. Or the biggest thing is the drying time. Um, this should be nice and dry uh, tomorrow to put like another whole layer on it, but I'm hoping that I get most of it done today. I can work on a painting for um, this size with this little. I say this has little amount of detail. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail, but it does have a whole lot of reflection lines. But um, a painting like this should take four to six hours. Um, for a new student, it's good to paint weekly so, or every couple of days, so that you don't have the challenges of trying to get the paint to adhere or blend properly or whatever. I recommend, um, I used to say one or two days a week for art class. That way your painting will dry in between enough that it won't be so frustrating. The worst thing you want to do when you begin painting is to get frustrated. You want to try to develop an um, acceptance for what you're, where you are at your level of painting. Um, I don't think I found it yet. I, uh, I get frustrated with my painting sometimes. But, um, I think it's normal to think that we're not perfect. We achieve a level that we are capable of. Or where you're at today. If I'm having a hard day and I may not get what I want to get done, I can always come back and touch this up again. And it's better when it's drier. But remember I said there's a whole bunch of little ripples in here. I gotta make sure I get those little ripples. So I'm gonna do some lines going this direction because the water goes this direction. You can take notes like this too, like a gray scale. I use a um, pencil drawing. I know that one of my friends did one recently of a marsh online and um, You can write that this is a, a lighter area, this is a darker area, it has almost a cross hatch. It's almost like a cross hatch um, texture here. But those are the little ripples in the water. And I want to make sure that we give some sort of uh, impression. Like I told you, this is my impression not going to be perfect, but it's an impression. 
Right, so in here and now I need to get some of this water here. I can take some of this color. Yeah, we're losing down below. Um, just a couple of things before we go. <coughs> um, Lisa said you could work on seven paintings at once and ro rotate between them so they have time to dry. I do. Sometimes I do do that. And uh, Mary Foley said yes, the frustration I hit with watercolors made her switch to acrylics. Yeah. So you see when I add more color to the um, paint, it's thicker, it will um, start to show up better. But the dunes have like a, um, a peach like color in the distance, so I want to make sure that that's in there, but that too is an under color. I would highlight that with white. Then it'll pop. So, if you were here this day, it was very glowy. So we're gonna make sure that this area here is very glowy. I keep coming back at it with another color. So I'll keep going back at this with the greens and the blues and the greens and the blues and my little Martian here. But you don't have to take it to like a total finished piece. It can, finished is what you decide is finished. This I told you I might put a few hours into it later. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to finish it, but you can check back. I'll um, post it online. <coughs> If anybody has painted along, you know, feel free to share it with us. We'd love to see it. I think they would um, post it on the BVAA website. I'm glad that you came to join me today in my studio. I wish that, you know, we could spend more time together, but um, we're here on uh, Saturdays from 1 to 3. And um, I hope you enjoy painting. If you don't enjoy it, you need to figure out how to enjoy it because it's very relaxing, it's very meditative. You might be using the wrong medium. Like Mary had said, she switched to acrylics and then she's happy. So um, paint on and happy day. I hope you guys have a great weekend.